Hi everyone! In this video we will be showing how to create gradient masks in Adobe Animate. Let's get started. So we are following the example that we saw in class where I had steam coming out of the cup and fading into nothingness. And so the, uh, the question was how did I get that effect to happen? Because by default all masks in um, Adobe Animate take the information within whatever you're using as a mask as alpha. So you have no possibility of creating any actual alpha transitions, which is what is needed to create this kind of a gradient. So let me go ahead and show you how to, how to set this up. I'm going to create a new file really quick here. And I am going to set up the same things that we've been working with in class. I'm going to switch the color background to something other than white. So we can actually see the lines. And let me bring in those lines from the previous movie. So I'm going to use this one right here, stream, steam line. So I'm going to drop them in here. Let me zoom out a little bit so we can see what it is. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mask and I'm just going to move them up in the Y axis. So to do so, the first thing I need to think of is how do I do this setup? The first thing you need to remember is that when you're working in Adobe Animate the way it is today, we need to create, we need to set up this layer to actually be what we call layer blend mode. And to do so, we want to create all of the information for the gradient mask and everything else, the motion and everything else inside its own movie clip. Now, in this case, we're not going to use a movie clip, sorry, we're going to use a graphic symbol. So I'm going to set up this graphic symbol that I already have here. You'll notice that it is a graphic symbol. It's called Streamlines. I am going to go ahead and select it and I'm going to press the F8 key or I'm going to right click it and um, convert it to symbol. And I am going to give it a name so that we know which one this is. I am going to call this one to layer mode. So that way I know that this is what I'm going to change the mode of this particular graphic to layer to the blend mode layer. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this from movie clip to graphic and then I'm going to click OK. So that eventually will be changed into layer blend mode in the um, under the frame options down here in the uh, properties for that particular frame. I'm going to switch this from normal to layer. Now doing that right now doesn't do anything because the artwork doesn't have anything inside it other than the lines. So nothing really changes when you're looking at this here. Let me go ahead and double click on that new movie clip that we just created, the two layer mode movie clip. So now I am inside that movie clip and it is here where I do the setup for the actual gradient mask. So let's go ahead and name things so that they make sense. This will be our waves layer. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call it mask. And that's, this is where the general mask is going to go, the main mask. And for that, in the new layer, I am going to create a rectangle. So I'm going to click my rectangle tool here under my tools and I am going to draw a rectangle. Now, let me go ahead and make this a straight rectangle without any outlines. And I want, I want to make it a solid color for now. So let's go ahead and make it black. So if I were to set this up as a mask, this would basically cut out, mask out the lines at that point. So to create that as a mask, I need to right click the mask layer and from the fly out menu, choose mask. That will create the actual masking for my curves. And I can go ahead and animate the curves at this point. Now, let me undo that really quick. And what I want to do is I want to select that uh, shape that I just drew and I'm going to copy it. Control C or Command C on the, P on the Mac. And I am going to create a new layer here. Actually, let's go ahead and set up this as a mask right now so that this is easier. This workflow would be easier if I do it this way. I'm going to go ahead and make that a mask and you'll notice now that my waves is under the mask layer. And then I'm going to select the waves layer and create a new layer in between the mask and the waves by clicking on the plus sign here on the timeline. Now you'll notice that that new layer is also under the mask control. So that whatever I put in this layer will, will also be masked out by the artwork on the top layer under the mask layer. This one right here, the layer three, right now I'm going to change its name to gradient mask. And it is here that I want to create that gradation for my alpha information. How do I do that? Let me go ahead and that since I had copied that mask, the original mask shape, I'm going to paste it into the new layer. So I'm going to select that and go edit, paste in place or control shift V, command shift V on the Mac. So now that I have that in there, let me turn off the visibility of the mask and the visibility of the lines. And you'll notice that I have the black box that I had just copied into that particular frame. 
You will also notice that when I created the mask, both the mask and the original waves layer were locked. For the mask to be visible on the stage, all layers need to be locked so that, you actually, that the actual masking operation happens. If you, um, if you lock everything, you're seeing this as black because that's the visibility that I have. You'll notice that if I turn off the visibility for the middle layer, it basically makes it disappear. It's, uh, everything works with that, with all the layers being locked. If I unlock any of the layers, everything basically comes apart. You don't see the masking anymore. So you need to make sure that when you're working with masks, things are locked when you're done with, every, with the whole setup. Now with this new, uh, the copied uh, shape that I put on the middle layer under the gradient mask, I'm gonna change its color from the solid black by going to the swatches menu on the right hand side and changing it to a gradient, black and white gradient in this case. I just need two colors. And then what I wanna do at this point is I wanna rotate that gradient by using the rotate gradient tool or the gradient tool actually. So you'll find that usually under your free transform tool in your left side tools right here. If it's not available for you, remember that you can always click on this three little dots at the bottom of your toolbar and that creates the flyout menu for all the tools that have been deactivated. You should find that gradient tool right here. And it will be just as easy to grab it from there, click it and drag it under that particular tool. Wait for a second so that it takes and you'll see that the menu flies open. And when it, once it flies open, you just let it drop and it will become a flyout menu for that particular set of tools. So what I want to do is let me go ahead and click on the little dots again to close that and go back to my gradient tool right here. Now you'll notice that the gradient transform tool allows you to either rotate by going to the corner here if you go close to the corner, you'll notice that your mouse will give you that little rotate arrow, which allows you to rotate your gradient. You can press shift to constrain to 45 degree angles. You can also use this center point here, the center box to resize the gradient. So you can do that. And you can use the center point here in the gradient to actually position where the midpoint for your gradient is in this case. So I'm gonna set it up so that it stays there. I've rotated it and I've resized and I am happy with the position for this thing. Let me click on the black arrow or the V key on the keyboard. You'll notice that I have my gradient set up. Now with this done, I wanna go ahead and with it selected, notice that I selected it, I see the little pattern in the fill. I am going to the color palette. Under the color palette, I see a swatch at the bottom that shows my gradient. So if I see this, this little white swatch belongs to this corresponds to the bottom part of the gradient on the artwork and the black one corresponds to the top part. Let me go ahead and select the black arrow here. By the way, you can modify this from here, but, uh, the, the actual gradient. Let me go ahead and select the black arrow here, the little black swatch, and then I'm gonna change from this section here, RGBA stands for red, green, blue, and alpha. This alpha information is what I wanna change in order to create the, the, the actual alpha gradient to create the mask. So let me go ahead and turn that to zero. When I do that, if I deselect my artwork, you'll notice that I now have a transparency. It goes from white to towards black, but it eventually disappears. And that means that there's no, that the alpha information here is not visible, it's transparent. However, this one down here is 100% opaque. So with this done, let me go ahead and select that artwork again. It is a shape at this point. I'm going to turn this into a movie clip. So I'll select this and I'll press F8 on the keyboard or right click convert to symbol at the bottom. Or like I said in class, you can also do modify convert to symbol. So there are many ways of doing that. You can also use your properties window and click on this little swatch right here to convert to symbol. So there are many ways of doing the exact same operation. So when you click on that, this will become your gradient mask and you wanna make this one a movie clip. That's the thing you want to do. So this is the work, the setup for this workflow. You need to make sure that this is a moving clip. Then you click OK on this. And once that's done, notice that it's still selected. Let's go to its uh, blending mode under object or frame and switch the blending mode for that uh, new movie clip from normal to alpha. That will make it disappear. It will look like it actually disappeared. Let's go ahead and lock this layer here and turn off visibility on everything else. And this will look normal here. It will look like the alpha information is the entire box as opposed to the actual gradient that I created. Um, but when we go back up to the main stage, you will notice that the alpha information is recognized by that layer mode that we turned this into at the very beginning. So when we set up that movie clip, remember that we went to its blending mode and we turned it into 
layer here under the frame blending mode. So that now becomes transparent. And if I were to place any artwork behind it, let's go ahead and say, I wanna create a circle. Let me give it a color like green, for example. If I place that in there, you'll notice that I, I'll see transparency. Let me actually set this up, sorry. Create a new layer, place it behind and create a circle, place it behind it. You'll notice that I see transparency. Now at this point, I can go back into that movie clip that has the outline information in it and then I can go ahead and modify my layers by adding, let's say, for example, I want to add um, classic tweeting to the bottom to this um, waves. Let me extend the other two layers as well because our, those are the masks. I'm going to select that frame and press F5 on the keyboard. And with that done, let me unlock the, the little waves, select the artwork, and maybe even add a new, a new keyframe in here and move this up a little bit. And you'll notice that now when I reactivate the masking and I go back up to the main scene, my waves will be moving once I extend this artwork here. So let me go ahead and extend it to two seconds so we can see what's happening. Press F5 and you'll notice that the waves are moving inside the graphic. So this is the workflow to create gradient um, masks in Adobe Animate. Now, this works with anything that has alpha information. So you could actually create a series of images in Photoshop, for example, and import them as an image sequence into Adobe Animate and use that image sequence as a movie clip to create a mask that then you would use as a gradient mask for anything that you want to animate behind it. So it's not just something that you can do internally. You can actually bring alpha information through PNG files into uh, Adobe Animate and you can go ahead and utilize the alpha information to create the gradient masks.